No, absolutely nothing at all. All right. Not quite as simple as it looks. So the job in hand today is to fit a Hall Effect sensor to the spindle on my Sieg SX2P milling machine. It's useful to know the spindle speed when you're milling because it varies according to the type of material you're milling and the type of bit you're using to mill it with. A Hall Effect sensor and uh, and a digital readout for it. I'm told that's um, a fairly simple fix. So the sensor itself fits to the drawbar cap and what most people do is drill a hole. I didn't want to do that. I hunted down this 3D model that some kind soul has posted up on Thingiverse with the hole preformed at the right height and what I'm doing here is turning it down to fit. Okay, so there's the cap on. Now this um, kit, let me just tap this off. This kit comes with a bunch of stuff. One of the bunch of stuff is this magnet and that goes straight on the top of the draw bar. Right, so this is the rest of the kit. This is what you get. You get a bag, always useful. <clears throat> you get this, which I have no idea what it's for. You get this, which is the Hall Effect sensor itself. Now, my understanding is that as the, the magnet whirs around on the drawbar, every time it passes this sensor, this sensor picks up the pulse of the magnetism, basically, the, the magnetic pulse from that, which then it sends down these wires to a clever box of trips that turns that into a speed per unit time, which it displays on this little box of tricks year. Okay? So I picked this up. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't pennies, but it wasn't expensive. I think it was about twenty quid or something. Twenty bucks actually now, because I think we're a dollar fifteen to the pound, which is um, kind of risible. Now the exciting thing about this is, it very handily tells you on the back. Brown power blue funny squiggle black. However, the wires that go into it are not thus marked and what we've got to do is join them with those wires so you see what I'm saying that plugs into there like that comme ça and then you trace down so you've got brown which they say is power so you've got this brown wire on the Hall effect sensor which presumably you then got to kind of splice to that and the same for the blue and the black okay so that's our job for today but first of all I want to actually install this which hopefully <laughs> hopefully will be as simple as taking that off uh, putting that on there we ourselves some space yeah and then I don't think we're gonna have room for a washer I must admit I might redesign this top I'm gonna to have to print it out anyway but I mean fair play to the guy he's had a good go and the fact it was the wrong size like I say there's you know so much uh, variability in 3d printing I mean even between so different materials on the same printer even between different days or with the same material on the same printer I mean whether it's background humidity or temperature or I don't know 
But what I will do, uh, I may redesign it, and I'm going to give myself a little raised flat land there and also give myself a little flat bit inside um, because I don't like... I never like screwing bolts through a curved surface. It's messy, it doesn't grip the way it ought to, and so on. OK, so that seems to be on there. Let's switch to the other camera and see how it looks on the machine. Now, what I'm going to do is adjust it so... Can you see where the, where the magnet is there? And apparently the magnet is kind of strong enough to hold itself on. But we want to be, I think, towards the top. Really? Or maybe down a bit? Bearing in mind that that's also going to sink about eighth of an inch. We'll come down slightly lower. We'll see if we get away with that. That looks remarkably neat. So you can see I've got this uh, flat plate here that comes with the machine. I've got a DRO display that fits on there quite nicely. So I think ultimately I'm going to be making a bracket that kind of sits on top of that. I'm sort of interested just to twist the wires together because there's no electrics needed. Presumably any electrics it needs is produced by the magnet spinning around anyway, because that is how they make electricity. So we will see, presumably that creates just enough current to light the display up. So what I'm going to do is just twist the wires together for now and see, um, see whether it works. So here we go. The whole thing is loosely wired up. This bit of wire here is just holding that onto that thing for the time being, that bracket. What I've got to do now is figure out which one of these thousands of cables is the one for the mill. I'm going to plug him in. I'm going to check that's on forward. I'm going to check there's nothing conflicting or hopefully nothing to get caught up. I'm going to lock off the head just in case. We are going to turn the thing down to zero. Was the okay? Then we're going to turn the on. Hope nothing goes bang. Let's turn it on at the mains. Might be an idea. Hit stop. Hit go. We have a green light, and then presumably. No. Okay. So it does need external power. So. Looking at the back of this, it looks like it needs, what does it say? DC 8 to 24 volts. Well, I mean, what? Presumably I can run it off 12 volts then. All right, let me go figure that out. OK, back in. So what I did was I went and found a wiring diagram. I realised you do need an external power source for this. And so I've wired up according to a blurry diagram for a completely different product. And so far, <gasps> nothing's gone bang. We've got zeros. So let's have another go at seeing whether we can get any kind of figures there. OK, unfortunately, no matter how I set the camera, it's not giving me, um, it won't stabilise the numbers. So I'm sorry, but it's just uh, nothing I can do about it. OK, turn on. Now, let's see if we get something. Nope, absolutely nothing at all. OK, I think we've got there. So let me switch on the Hall Effect sensor and you can see it uh, seems to be happily singling away. And then let's put some revolutions on the machine. It's not that steady, so you can see that's fluctuating between 70, 72, 74, 75, 73, 77, 75. However, at least it's working. I think what I'm going to do is adjust the distance on this, adjust the distance, push it in a bit and see if we can get it a bit closer to that stem, to that magnet and see if that stables it up a bit. OK, I just want to show you the back of the Hall Sensor Effect display. Basically, how I finally fixed it was 
on the brown terminal it says brown power and it's got a plus next to it it says power minus and then it's got blue gnd so i think what i was doing wrong in the first place was putting the positive from the 12 volt output on the brown that was correct but then connecting the minus signal from the 12 volt to work on to number two where it says power minus however it turns out that it should have been on the blue gnd so just to recap as well as the brown wire from the sensor going to brown you also needed or rather i also needed the positive from the 12 volt going there and the minus wire from the 12 volt going on to the blue GND. That worked for me. I don't know what your setup is. Absolutely do your own research. Originally I had it, as I say, I had the minus from the 12 volt going to where it says power minus. So I was getting a display lit up, but I wasn't getting any RPM information from the sensor. So I didn't blow anything up by connecting up the wrong wire. You need to do your research. This was a fairly cheap unit from the usual suspects off uh, a well-known auction site that came with zero documentation. I would suggest absolutely do your own research. Okay, so I marked that at 12.50. Well, what the next division is. Now this machine says it goes up to 2500. I don't know what the Hall Effect sensor goes up to. Go up all the way. Now that's interesting because at maximum, which they say is 2500, it is actually showing. 2496, 2498, 2500. So I think we can kind of say that's reasonably calibrated. So clearly I need to tidy up that wiring. I need to make a bracket for this such that it can sit on top. And then I have to find ways of, um, uh, uh, you know, keeping all that wiring tidy. Unfortunately, it looks like I've got to have another wall wart there, uh, 12 volts to drive this thing. It's a pain, to be honest. I'd like to take it off the control box there, so I might have a route around inside and see if there's somewhere I can pull 12 volts out. I don't know. Um, or, yeah. Yeah, that's a real pain in the neck. Whether I can even mess around with the, with the uh, you know, open up that wall wart, take the guts of it out, figure out a, an enclosure here and take the 240 volts off, um, off the main supply for the machine. I think that's probably a way around. But I am pleased that the thing is working and I figured out the wiring. Just wanted to give you a little update as to how far I've got. I've just taken off the back of the control box on the mill SX2P. I was looking around to see if I could see any 12 volt by any happy chance take off around, but there isn't. However, this is where the mains power comes in. Uh, you've got your blue is live. Uh, sorry, blue is neutral, brown is live. And it looks to be relatively simple to um, tap a little pigtail off there. I should point out at this stage, electricity is extremely dangerous. 240 volts can kill you. Um, probably 110 can too if you're in, in America or a place that uses 110. Don't do this unless you are absolutely certain of what you're doing and you have experience and you have proper training. In the UK, I believe it is illegal uh, in some cases to mess about with electrical equipment in your house. Suffice to say, I've been knocking around with electrics for over half a century. I've given myself a lot of shocks and a lot of pain and a lot of burns in the meantime. That's how I've learnt. I suggest you don't do the same. That being said, what I'm going to do now is you 
these are screwed in to the terminal so far as I can see. You can't get a screwdriver in there because clearly the box is in the way. So I'm hoping it's just those four screws to take off. And I don't know if you can see, we are unplugged. We are unplugged from the machine. The other thing I should say is this has been left overnight and hasn't been switched on since. So I'm assuming all the capacitors will have um, leaked away by now. So here we go, that lifted out relatively simply. Those are the terminals that we want to take a, a spur off. This is the 12 volt transformer, which I've taken out of its casing. You can see there the, the, um, the main input wires, here are the output wires, and you've got the little thing there. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit that inside this control box. There just isn't room, which is a shame, but hey, so what I'm going to do is reuse this casing, probably mount it on the side. don't know if you can see that, the light's a bit screwy. I can then lead a wire straight through and tap in and that should be good. Fingers crossed, eh? I found the original enclosure, this, I just couldn't make fit. These things are shoehorned in so tightly that um, once you start moving wires around and stuff, you just haven't got a hope of uh, making things fit again. So I very quickly ran up this um, rather shoddy uh, little enclosure on my 3D printer. It's just done in blue PLA at the moment. Um, I'm figuring out how to do PET G, so I have a number of things to do, but it will do as a temporary fix. So that is now kind of screwed on, screwed in. I got the wires leading through, so I now have to reconnect to the board and put the board back in. Then we're on to soldering in the Hall effect sensor and the LCD display. So there we are, all plumbed in. I don't know if you can make out, but the live is at the top and the neutral is second down. So that's brown to the live and blue to the neutral. I've uh, wrapped that up reasonably neatly and I've led the 12 volt wire through the back here and we'll um, attach it to this I think and that's how she looks inside I have yet to make a lid for it but that will happen so I'm just going to put the cover back on and then we'll crack on with wiring up the Hall effect sensor and the LCD so here we go we're all wired in everything seems to work a couple of little um, <clears throat> unforced errors. I made originally this box too big so that when I moved the slide up and down it conflicted and in fact that's not the best position for that box. That's only a temporary box anyway as I said it's actually blue plastic PLA under that. I'm going to do a proper one from Pet G at which point I will take the whole thing apart again and mount that on the other side where it's not going to conflict with anything. Apart from that, we seem to be in business. So this in here is the little 12 volt transformer. That is wired into the board on the other side of here where we can tap straight into the 240 volts coming in. The 12 volt output, 12 volt DC output is this wire here that then combines with wires from the LCD display and the Hall, sen Hall effect sensor. All right, well, enough gassing. So the display comes on as soon as we turn the machine on at the mains, even though the machine itself is not switched on yet. And clearly that's because it's picking up the 240 volts before it goes into the, the mill's own motherboard. So that comes on as soon as the mains power comes on. And then 
we will turn the machine on as the green light and let's just watch that speedo it seems to be rather more stable now which I'm sorry it's flickering see when I tried it before it was sort of hovering all over the place oh that now seems to have steadied So we can see that's that's actually fairly consistent. It's certainly a lot more stable than it was. It's holding at 688, say eight, five. Let's turn the knob up. It takes a while to settle. It's not um looks like woody. Yeah no, there's still a sort of a Okay, well that's narrowing down, 1052, 1053, 1051, 54, 51, it seems to fluctuate between 1 and 4, maybe 5, so we'll say plus or minus 5 RPM, which isn't bad considering that's going at just over 1000 RPM in, in total. We seem to be in business. Thank you very much for watching, if you got this far, and hopefully I will see you next time.